is Mark Schumacher. I was born in France, raised in Israel, and I've been around in the States for 30 plus years. And I do everything that has to do with horses, as that's both my passion and what I make a living with. Life for me growing up in France uh, was not exactly ideal for two reasons. First of all, I was part of a minority. And secondly, I was about two years younger than the next youngest kid in the classroom. And the French people being quite conservative, they did not like minorities, and they certainly did not like to have some guy uh, which is two years younger than their own son in that same classroom. I got into horses as a way of uh, making friends, which I really couldn't make friends very well with kids that were two, three years older than me. There wasn't a single week without me at least touching a horse or being next to a horse. The emotions involved in riding a horse there is at first a certain apprehension, which I kind of no longer have and I miss it. Because that same apprehension teaches you to be very careful, but at the same time, not to have an unjustified fear of riding a horse, but have a reasonable fear based on understanding your own capacity and what a horse can do and cannot do. But that thrill and that bit of apprehension causes you to be better, to overcome your negative feelings and to achieve more. I came here on vacation with my ex-wife who was pretty much a refugee from Iran. She had to leave. We had to leave during that revolution. So we both came in a tourist visa. And then the question was, what do we do? We're married. She's not going back to Iran. We were living in Iran at the time. Uh, we no longer really have ties in Israel, so we have to stay in the States. And I was again on a tourist visa. So I stayed here for almost 10 years illegally until I was able to adjust my status and first get a green card and then become an, uh, an American citizen. So I had to make a living. I tried to interview for different positions. And even though I would have qualified for some of them, the last question was always, can we see your green card? No, you can't because I don't have one. Sorry, contact us back when you have a green card. So I had to create my own thing. And uh, the thing that I knew best was basically dealing with horses. So I approached different riding academies and I told them, can you rent me horses for a lower rate and I will bring my own students. And they were more than happy to oblige. And in the span of about two years, I uh, put together different continuing education programs with horseback riding, advertised and got up to about 200 members that were riding with me once or twice a week at those different riding academies. So that gives you an idea, 200 members riding twice a week, that, that's a lot of people. Doing this allows me to combine my passion for horses and my knowledge of horses together with my field of studies, which was education. But I also have now an MBA in finance and I have the knowledge of horses. So I can combine all these things together and make the community and the kids benefit from it. Um, I always had a very down-to-earth approach with horses. That's why I created EquiShare which means not only equi for equality, but also sharing a horse, an equine. So what pleases me is the fact that I can provide horse ownership-like experiences to children or adults that do not have the money, the finances, the time commitment 
of horse owners, and I can do that at a fraction of the cost. So that has always been the guideline, what I kept in mind, and my goal throughout the past 30 years. The fact that I've introduced so many people to horseback riding, it's, uh, it feels really great on the one hand, because now after 30 years since I started, I still hear from them. I can feel or I can, I can see the results that they have achieved. From time to time I see a name, really that's on the limelight. I mean, a name of someone that's really achieving almost national or international level. And whoa, that used to be my student 30 years ago, 25 years ago. So it's a great feeling. Uh, on the other hand, it shows you a little bit that you're aging because now some of them are sending their own children to be taught by my staff or even myself. And so it's, it's a bittersweet feeling. So great feeling that you have achieved something and brought something to the community and to people that couldn't afford otherwise doing it. But on the other hand, you know, uh, it reminds me now that uh, I'm getting closer to retirement and at some point I'm going to have to drop, you know, my passion and, and what I have been doing for so many years.